Managing, tracking, and importing contacts into monday.com can be a complete nightmare if you do not know how to do it. Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you the best practices that we use for our clients on a day-to-day -day basis. So let's head straight over to monday.com. And as you can see, we are in an example monday.com system. Now, as we are going to be managing contacts in the work management area or creating contacts, what we firstly wanna do is add a new board. So I'll go to the plus button in the top right-hand corner here, or top left-hand corner, I suppose. Um, and we want to go ahead and create a new board. So I press the new board option. Firstly, we want to give our board a name. So I'm just going to call this contacts as for the video. We've then got our privacy options. So main visible to everyone. So anyone in the monday.com account can see this private or shareable. You may look to use private if you do have this available as a feature as part of your paid package, because you probably aren't going to want everyone to be able to see your contact records. Uh, but I'll leave this as main just for the example of the video. And then we've got the naming convention. Now this does not affect anything inside of the system at all apart from the name. So I'm gonna go ahead and select custom and I'm gonna put contacts plural. And it will, monday.com is smart enough to be able to work out plural and singular, which is quite impressive. So once you've done that, just press the create board button and congratulations, you've created your contacts board. It does usually take a moment or two to load. Now we've gotta make some significant changes. So firstly, what I would do, this is my approach, is I would gut everything. So we wanna get rid of the secondary group. I don't think that's necessary for contacts at all, unless you would like to be grouping. I would delete the file option. I don't think we want that. I would probably also delete the status option as well. Um, and dependent on the use case, you may or may not choose to use the person, um, person column, so assigning people to a contact. I then change this top group name to contacts. And there we go, we've got the absolute basic framework set up. Now, the first thing I do is I want to lock this date column and I want to change the name to date created. So I'm going to change the name to date created. I'm then going to press the three dotted button, go to settings and press restrict column editing. The reason I am doing this is every time a contact is added to this board, I want to see when, what on what date, how many contacts are added per week, per month, um, it's just really good for auditing and management of contacts. I would strongly, strongly urge you to do this and set this up. In order to track this, we just need to create a very simple automation, which I'll walk you through now. So go to the automate in the top right hand corner, go to board automations, add automation. And what we want to do is trigger item created, very simple, and then, then do this set date is our action set date and then select the date column, which is the only one on the board at present. You can, if you'd like to include the time. I don't think that's particularly necessary, but you can if you'd like. And then I'll just press create automation. There we go, job done. So now anytime a new item is created on this board, it will automatically populate the date created. Um, and we can use this for reporting in the future. Should you ever want to, I would recommend just having it available. It's a best practice to have. So now what are the next steps? The item name I would traditionally use and I would recommend you use as the full name. So as it's a contact, it's gonna be Nick Boardman, first name and last name, okay? And then what I would look to do is add a free text column, text column, and then I would call it first name. There we go. Then I'll just reposition that here. Why, you may ask, trust me, if you plan on doing any email marketing in the future, even if you haven't planned it yet and you are, it, it could happen potentially, you're gonna want this in place because reverse engineering 2000 contacts that have got first name and last name just in the uh, contacts area is gonna become a nightmare. And you do not, you do not wanna be sending emails where it says, hi, Nick Boardman, that does not look particularly good. That means you that people will know you've made a mistake there. So I would have first name, Nick, and then what I would do is I would have a text for last name as well. This isn't as necessary, might I add. You might just have first name for email purposes, but best practices, let's just keep it there anyway. I'm just gonna remove this for the time being. We then wanna add the email and phone number. So really simple stuff. Just press the plus button again, search email. I would recommend just using the email column available and then phone number as well. I would use, I like the way that functions um, with the area code, so which, which is helpful. You then might want to add location and company as well. So location, you've got two options and I'm gonna show you. If you search address, in the columns area, it just gives you the text option. So you can use that for address. I personally prefer using the locations column 
um, unless you're integrating, mind you. If you're integrating, I would use free text. But if you're not, I would use the locations column. Reason being, if you press add to board, and then I'm just gonna put my address in as London, because that's where I'm based. And then I go to add view, go to the option, explore more views, and then search maps, open in board, and then I'll quickly just dock this widget. You will see that we will be able to see all, where all of our contacts are, which is pretty cool, right? So you can see this is based in London. If you've got any anywhere else in the world, Spain, Poland, the United States, you can see that and that will be available to you, which I think is quite interesting, could be quite useful for you, especially if you're doing contact visits. Um, you can obviously map and plan your contact visits accordingly. Uh, from there, we'd probably look to add the business name if it is B2B. Uh, to do this, I would go and uh, add column to the right or just press the plus button at the end and go for a free text option. Um, and then I'd just change that to company name. There we go. Now for B2B, a lot of people seem to track title as just a free text option um, in their account. So they just add a free text and it would say title and then someone would either put it in or they wouldn't put it in or if someone would put director or someone else put ceo someone put owner they all mean the same thing it's all very confusing there's spelling errors i definitely would not do that and i'm going to show you a preferred alternative option how i would do this for my clients is i would add two status options you could just do one if you wanted to so you could have uh owner c-suite management um and then just I probably wouldn't include anyone else unless you in that was part of your business model. But I would go add column status and then I'll go through my status options and I'd add and then I'll go owner, maybe, or you could just do C suite. Um sorry, excuse me. There we go. C suite and then you go director level and then you just could go management. And then I would delete these options as they are not applicable to this status. Delete and delete and I'll press apply. So I just rename this to management level. There we go, oh, management level. The reason being is we now can report on the contact information that we have. So we can say, all right, I wanna see all contacts that are equal to C-suite. We can do a filter or we can actually generate reports that show us the volume of contacts on the, each of these levels. Now we can actually take this a step further. Um, you don't have to. I think this is quite interesting, but we go by department as well. So we go status option again, and then we go edit labels and we go department, department being marketing, uh, finance, sales, uh, and then we could have a management department as well. Um, you could go customer service, so on and so forth. Service, and then I'll delete again the other options, not necessary. Uh, delete and delete and then I would have apply and then just change this to department and then hide that column summary again there we go why have I done this we've got management level c-suite director management and then I've got the department I can now filter or generate a port and go right I want to see all of the c-suite man c-suite managers in the finance department in my contacts database do you know how powerful that is as opposed to having a dodgy title that some people put director of finance, some people put CFO, some people have put finance director. This is way more comprehensive. I would strongly recommend approaching contact management this way if it is applicable for you. The final column that I would add is the comments area. So add column to the right, go more columns and then just go long text. There we go, press add to board and then comments. You don't have to use this, you can just use the updates functionality, but we've got that available to us if we wanna add comments about a particular contact. So now we've created our contacts board, congratulations. Now I'm gonna show you how to import contacts into your contacts board. Really easy, go to the new contact button in the top left-hand corner, use the drop-down arrow just to the right-hand side, and select import contacts. Now I've prepared ahead of time a CSV file, which I'm just gonna go ahead and drag and drop onto this little box area here. You can go ahead and either select a file or just drag and drop yourself. Then press the next option. And we firstly need to select the item name. So that is the first name on the, or the first name on each of the items. So I've already gone ahead and prepared this. I knew what I was gonna put, so I'll put full name. So that is gonna be the full name for each of our contact records. So once I've done that, I press full name, I press the next option. We now need to map each of the, um, excel columns to our board columns so now i've gone ahead and connected all of the different columns up just going to connect phone as well so i've connected phone then we've just got the address column as well connect location 
Um, and there we have it. So we've got first name, last name, email, phone number, company name, address, comments, um, and title. I had that before I came up with the genius idea or the recommendation of doing the department and then doing the seniority as well. That we've, we've applied that for clients in the past. I think that works a lot better. You also just need to ensure you exclude the first row of the spe spreadsheet from import because that is probably gonna be your titles per each of the columns. And once you're happy, press, just press the next button. You're now gonna be presented with these three options. We can create new items irrespective of whether the data exists or not. We can skip items. So if the data already exists inside of this board, we can skip past it. And if we want to do that, we need to select the column that is going to dictate what the match is going to be. So if the email is the same or the phone number is the same, then you skip the import. Or alternatively, you can overwrite existing. So same principle applies. If the email is a match, overwrite the existing data inside of monday.com with a new data that's being populated by the Excel spreadsheet. We don't need to worry about that. So I'm just going to press create new item and press start import this shouldn't take long so there you go the data is imported through successfully um you can see first name last name email phone numbers not come through because i didn't put anything on the csv file um, i wasn't going to share my personal phone number and then we got location company name and then we've got the management level and department which was a new idea post the example spreadsheet now you will have noticed that all of this has gone into a separate group what I would recommend doing is mass selecting all of your contacts, just press move to and then move to group and then move to the contacts area and then just delete this group. Just go to the three dotted buttons and press delete. And there we have it. Congratulations. We've created a contacts board. We have imported contacts into monday.com. I'm hoping this has been very, very, very helpful. If you need any help setting up monday.com for your business, check out the link below. We would be delighted to help. Thank you and goodbye.